Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. We are singing, blessed be your name, O oh, in heaven, in heaven and on. Blessed be your name, blessed be in heaven and on earth, heaven and on. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name. You are bigger than what people say, Jehovah. You are bigger than what. Oh, yes. Oh, you are bigger than what people say, Jehovah. You are bigger than what. Oh, we say you are, you are good, you are kind, you are bigger than what people say. We are saying you are good, you are kind, you are bigger than what people say. You are more, you are more than what people say. Over you are more than what people say. Oh, yes, you are more than what people say. Jehovah, you're more than what people say. Oh, we saying you are good, you are kind, you are more than what people. Oh, we are saying you are. You are kind. You are more than you are more than what people say. We sing Jehovah. You are, you are kind. You are more than what people say. We sing Jehovah. You are good. You are kind. You are more than what. We sing Jehovah, you are the most high. You are, we sing Jehovah, you are the most high. You are, you are, you are the most. We sing Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Oh, we sing Jehovah. You are, you are the most high God. We sing Jehovah. You are the most. We sing Jehovah. Oh, we sing Jehovah. You are the most high. You are, you are, you are the most high God. Oh, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Oh, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Oh, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Oh. You are good, and your mercy is forever. Oh, oh, yeah. We sing Jehovah, you are the most. You are, you are the most, I God. Oh, we sing Jehovah. Oh, you are, you are the most high God. Oh, we sing Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. 
Oh, we sing Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Oh, we sing Jehovah, you are the most. We sing Jehovah, you are the most high God. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. Sing no man on earth, no man should give glory. All the glory, all the glory must be to the Lord. Oh, yes, all the glory must be, all the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord now, for He is worthy, is worthy of our praise. No man should give glory to him all the glory all the glory must be to the lord all the glory must be all the glory must be to the lord to the lord now for he is worthy is worthy of our praise. No man should give glory to him. All the glory, all the glory must be to the Lord. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument, yes, you are by yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalm 126, verses 1 to 3. Psalm Verses 1 to 3. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Verse 2. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nation, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. The Lord has done mighty things for us and we are glad. The Lord has shown us a lot of mercy and we are glad. The Lord has answered us and we are glad. Let us begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Let us thank him. Let us bless his name. Let us magnify his name. Indeed, the Lord has been so good to us. The Lord has visited us in various forms. Let us give him all the praises. The Lord has answered us. The Lord has heard our prayers. Let us appreciate his name. Let us thank him. Begin to magnify this God, the one that gave you life. Let us thank him. Let us bless his name. Father, we thank you. We lift you up, we exalt you, we magnify your name. You have been so good to us. We bless your holy name. We worship you, Lord. Let us begin to thank him for the gift of life. Let us bless his name. Let us acknowledge him. It is by his mercy that we are not consumed. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless you, we lift you up, we magnify your name, we glorify your name. Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for the bread that we bread in. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for not leaving us on our own. Thank you, Lord, because you have not allowed the enemy to triumph over us. Thank you, Lord, because you have not allowed men to ask that where is our God. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. We lift you up. We exalt you. Glory, honor, adoration be to thy name, Lord. Ancient of days, we thank you. We magnify your name, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. Let us thank him for preservation. Let us thank him for protection. The Lord indeed has been so good to us. None has gone missing. None has left. But Lord, he has increased us every time. Father, Lord, we thank you. 
we bless your name, we lift you up. On behalf of every icon, Lord, we say thank you. Father, Lord, we say thank you. None has left, none has gone missing. Instead, you have increased us, Lord. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. We lift you up, Lord. Thank you for diverse testimony in our midst. Thank you for the great work that you are doing in our midst and in our lives. Father, Lord, we bless your name. Let us thank him for his presence in all our services. The Holy Spirit is always there to fellowship with us. Let us appreciate his name. Father, we thank you. We lift you up, we exalt you. Glory, honor, adoration be to thy name, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for honoring us with your presence every time we gather. Glory be to thy name, Lord. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. To you alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to commit today's service into God, sir. The Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, do that which only you can do. Do that which you want to do in our midst. Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we hand over today's service into your hands, Lord. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Do the miraculous in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray that our word will come this evening. That that word that God has prepared for us, that it will not elude us. It will get to us. It will enter us. It will profit us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that our word will come tonight in the name of Jesus. That word that you have prepared for us, Lord, it will get to us. It will enter us. It will find practical expression in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to ask for grace to be doer of his word. Father, Lord, we ask for grace to be doer of your word. Father, Lord, grace to be obedient, Lord. Let it be released upon each and every one of us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to appreciate the name of the Lord for that which he said today in our midst. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for that which you are said today in our midst, Lord. Be that glorified, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. On behalf of our Father in the house, I welcome you to our global online church today. Praise the Lord. Good to see all of you. How was your day? How was your week? Praise the Lord. I just want to encourage us briefly from the book of John. It's a scripture we are familiar with. John chapter 10 verse 9. John chapter 10 verse 9. The New King James says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and we go in and out and find pasture. The message says, I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for. We freely go in and out and find pasture. Jesus Christ talking here, he said, I am the door. I am the gate. That means no matter what you are looking for in the kingdom, he is the door. He is the way. There is nothing you want that you do not, that you will not pass through Jesus. Daddy told us that whatever God can give you, the devil can also give you. But which one will you choose? Will you choose to go to the way? Will you choose to follow God or you will choose to follow the devil? You know, Daddy was saying that even the devil attends our prayer meeting. He listens to our requests. He knows what we are seeking for. And that is why we need the spirit of discernment to actually you know when you see results, when you see answers. To know which one is this one demonic or is this one divine you know when we talk about salvation salvation is beyond you giving your life to christ it is more than that in salvation we have giving your life to christ we have deliverance we have wealth we have riches we have protection and salvation is everything that has to do with us and christ is saying i am the door i am the gate anyone anyone goes through me will be cared for that means and you know that is why we are here again to know the principles of God, to know the principles of the kingdom. If Jesus is saying, I am the door, anyone that enters me, he will be saved. How do you enter the door? How do you locate the gate? How do you know this is the door I'm to pass through? The first one is to give your life to Christ. Once you give your life to Christ, you have entered the door. But how do you assess the things in the kingdom? And that is why we are here again, to assess the things of the kingdom. What are the principles we need? You know, things, things whatever will be, will not be. And we, we, we've been taught here that anything you want, you have to take it by force. Because if you just live your life like that, and just think things will just go the way they want, they will not, because we live in a negative world. We live in a world that is full of negativity. That is why I think it was last Sunday or two Sundays ago that Daddy was telling us that if you leave a place, if you leave a field, you don't plant anything, you don't tender it, what will grow there? Wheat. But if you want fruit, if you want to see mango, if you want to see guava, if you want to see orange, 
challenges. You have to take your time to plant the seed of mango so that mango will grow. You don't wake up one day and check the back of your house and you start seeing mango growing, you start seeing purple growing. No, you have to make a deliberate and a conscious effort to do that. The same thing with the word of God. We are born again. How do we assess these promises? How do we assess what God has promised to give us? by following his principles and how do we know his principles by reading the word of god and by coming to church and listening to people we are here again and the lord has prepared a vessel for us to show us principles on how to assess the promises of god i want to encourage us this evening that please let us pay attention and let us don't say because we are online you know most of the time we get carried away when we are online nobody is monitoring you sometimes you will just log in and just be doing other things it's not supposed to be so because if you are here physically you will not be allowed to do that in fact you will not even have the mind to do that so i don't want us to feel that because you are online you just Put your phone there and you will not pay attention. I want us to pay attention because our word can come anytime. It can come through either word ministration. It can come through song ministration. It can even come through prayers. I want you to pay attention because the Lord has prepared a vessel for us to show us principles on how to assess the promises of God. I pray that our word will not elude us this evening in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why don't you buy your heart and say, Father grace to be attentive let it be released upon me tonight in the mighty name of jesus father in the name of jesus we pray that grace to be attentive let it be released upon us tonight in the name of jesus that we will pay rap attention to that word that you have prepared for us in the name of jesus father we thank you for in jesus mighty name we have prayed praise the lord praise the name of the lord praise the lord online praise the lord those joining us online praise the name hallelujah. of hallelujah okay i just want to be sure that hallelujah praise god i wanted to be sure that i'm being heard praise the name of the lord yeah. hallelujah praise god thank you mommy for that um short word of education um i count it a great privilege to bring forth the word for the and I want to appreciate and I want to appreciate daddy for this opportunity that he has granted me and it is my prayer that the what the Lord has packaged for us this evening will not miss out in the name of Jesus amen so from the theme of today's um, conversation or from, from the theme of today's um, topic flourishing in our times flourishing in our times or we can say flourishing in what difficult times flourishing in difficult times when daddy asked me to prepare the message for this service i and this particular um thing came to mind and i discussed it with him and he said it is also something that resonates with him so it means that the spirit is one and um it's it's applicable to the present day now because we all know that it's difficult times it's hard times at the moment and um, as Christians, we are expected not to follow the bandwagon. We are expected to be distinct. We are expected to be separated from the world. We are expected to, to live a life that is worth emulating. And that is the reason why this we are going to be discussing flourishing in our times. And then um, there are two key words in this um, particular thing, the word flourishing and our times. And what do we understand by the word flourish? The word flourish means to blossom. It means to blossom. It also means to bloom. It means to grow vigorously. You need to um, um, attention to the word vigorously, to grow vigorously. That means irrespective of the storm, it is growing. Irrespective of the, of um of any um, hindrance is growing, irrespective of the obstacle is growing. It means to gain weight and um, to gain wealth or possession, to gain wealth or possession. It means to thrive. It means to thrive. It means to prosper despite all odds. It means to prosper despite all odds. And what do we mean by hard times or tough times? Hard times are periods of difficulties, 
period of hardship, challenging period, bad times, low moments, times that you 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 are about to give in. Those are hard times. And then um, I, I think you agree with me that we are in the period of hard times. We are in hard times economically. We are in hard times in every ramification. And no country is left out. So most times uh, we can think that, okay, it's a particular country that is experiencing hard time or the other. Um, it, it, it's, it will interest you to note that every country, every place where you find yourself, they are going through their own peculiar hard times. Praise the name of the Lord. If you take a survey of the economic situation of the country, both for us and in Nigeria or anywhere in the world, there is a lot of pandemonium. There is a lot of issues. We, like in Nigeria now, we know about the, the effect of the fuel subsidy that has had impact on a lot of um, prices in the market. We know of food shortages. We know of unstable foreign exchange that is affecting prices of um, commodities in the market. People are experiencing low moments. Even recession has even started taking place because in the, the UK government posted that um, the company, um, the country has gone into recession. Investors are losing millions of nairas in stock ma stock markets and what have you. The banking system too are not le are, is not left out. High interest rates. People are uh, record shows that we have over 104 million Nigerians below the poverty level. Even in the UK, we have about 14.4 million people in abject poverty. Homelessness, people are suffering, people don't have where to sleep. Perpetual debt, people are in constant debt. I'm not painting these discomforting statistics for us to get overwhelmed or to get discouraged, but I'm trying to let us know that this is actually what is going on now. And the message I'm coming with this evening is a message of hope. And the message of hope is that I miss this chaotic situation. I miss these issues that all around, the storms of life. We as Christians, we are exempted. We are redeemed from this global heat. We are redeemed from this hour of horror. The Bible made us to understand in Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 and 13. It said, and Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in that same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper, continued prospering, until he became prosperous. It will interest you to know that in this particular situation, when Isaac was prospering and continued to prosper and became prosperous, there was famine in the land, in the land of Gira. There was abject po poverty in that land. But regardless of what was happening, he was, he was prospering. He was prospering. And he continued to prosper. Praise the name of the Lord. That shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. So if we don't go through our times, how can we now say, how can we say God has won a battle if there was no battle at all? How can we say that we, we, we can level mountain if there was no mountain at all? How can we say that we are more than conquerors if there was no fight at all? So it means that we would need to experience, we need to go through this moment and come out victorious. We should not always see of view life from the gloomy perspective. We should see it as an opportunity to, to, to come out or to triumph. And we should not always demonstrate a what? A victim mentality. We are kings, we are queens, and we should not be pitied. I want to quickly let us know some hard facts about difficult times. Hard facts about difficult times. One, hard times are real. Difficult times are real. They exist. I need us to know that. They exist. It's not science fiction. They exist. There is, as I said earlier, there is hunger. There is a lot of things in the land. They, we, we, um, I was reading um, on the news where 
you see citizens or people of the country they are intercepting trailers that are carrying loads of food and they are taking the food there and they are eating it it's at times the exchange of policies for those in the uk we see they every day they are rolling out policies and everybody is going elter skelter we don't know what to do immigration status and the likes so they are real we need to know that our times have existed before so don't think that you are the only first person experiencing or well, you're in the season of our time our times have existed before so it is nothing new the bible made us to understand in genesis chapter 26 verse 1 he said a severe famine a severe famine struck the land as it has happened in abraham's time so a severe famine struck the land as it has happened in abraham's time so one thing you need to know in life is that our times have existed before the so there is nothing new about it the only thing that is new in life is nothing our times are surmountable and you need god to achieve that our times are surmountable and you only need god to navigate this and we can see that in isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 in the nlt version it said only i can tell you the future before it happens everything i plan will come to pass for i do whatever i wish that's god speaking the, the other um, King James Version said, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is to come. And I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that pleases, all that I please. Praise God. So it means that God knows the end from the beginning. So if God has already known the end from the beginning, so he knows his way, he knows the roadmap, he knows how to navigate. So it is just for us to align with him. Nothing takes God by surprise, nothing nothing absolutely nothing takes him by surprise he knows the beginning from the end he knows the he knows the end also for he knows the end from the beginning praise god the good news is that as christians we are exempted we are protected and we are redeemed from these hard times hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 it says and this word yet once again signifieth the removing of those things that are shaking and of things that are made and those things that cannot be shaken may remain praise god what is that trying to let us know that in this period it is those that are unshaken in god that will be able to stand he said those that are unshaken would remain so as believers we will remain while others are shaking and they are moving they are moving with the wind with the tide of the wind we would remain we will blow them because we are unshaken, we won't be tossed around by the storms of life. We are not expected to resign to faith. We are not expected, as Christians, we are not expected to resign to faith. I see some Christians say, oh, we can't wait until the end of this government. We can't wait until the policy passes. We can't wait. How long will you continue to wait for events? You are expected to thrive. You are expected to flourish, irrespective of the, of the, of the, of the situation. So we shouldn't give up. Because when the darkness is thicker, the light makes a great impact. So we should be distinct as believers, and a demand is placed on us to flourish. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 19 said, They shall not be ashamed. They shall not be disgraced in evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So we are expected to thrive and not just survive in our times praise the name of the lord the question you ask me is that okay how do i now flourish in this season how do i flourish in this season i'll just be giving us two, two ways we could actually flourish in this season they are not exhaustive but i'm just going to be touching on two because of because of our time number one we have to have a fantastic relationship with god if you want to navigate these hard times, these difficult times, this pandemonium, this ups and downs, you have to have what a fantastic relationship with God. You have to, I'm, I'm repeating it, you have to have, have a fantastic, you know, I said it from the beginning that it is only God that knows the end from the beginning. You understand? So for you to be able to navigate, for you to be able to journey through life, you have to have a fantastic relationship with God. And how do I have a fantastic relationship with God? It means that you have the fear of God. Fear of God. Nothing flies in our times like the fear of God. 
not implies in our times like the fear of God. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 say, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How can you escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So we need to have the fear of God. Don't forget that the fear of God, Joseph had the fear of God, and that was why he was able to flourish even in our times. He had the fear of God. Remember he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And sin against God. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He had the fear of God. And what happened? God catapulted him from to the palace, from the prison. Another Bible uh, person that also uh, uh, has, um, that also had the fear of God and excelled is Daniel. Daniel excelled amongst his peers. He was better than the magicians, the astrologers. And what did he do? He had the fear of God. He said he proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine he drank. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Praise the name of the Lord. He feared God. He feared God. And that was why he was able to stand out among his peers and contemporaries. So every great destiny, every great destiny has its roots in the fear of God. I repeat, every great destiny has its roots in the fear of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 25 verse 4, it says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So the, the template for life, the template to be able to go and um, not and and, and have a, 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 a seamless journey is by what? By fearing God, because he will reveal the secrets. He said we need, and I said in my in my in, in what I wrote here that we need revelation to navigate the journey of life. He needs to show us the roadmap. Psalm 33 verse 18 says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. So he watches over those who fear him. He's a friend to those who fear him. He confides in those who fear him. And Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, he said, and ye shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to make wealth. It is he who gives you the power to make wealth. Wealth does not only mean riches or financial um, uh, prosperity. It is all encompassing. Good health, sound mind, spiritual growth, and everything. What are you? So it is he who gives power to make wealth. So you can't flourish outside God. You cannot. You can't flourish outside God. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. It says, seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you so the fear of god is a good proof is a good is a proof of your relationship with god the fear of god is a proof or is a good is a proof of your good relationship with god it restricts you from allowing your humanity to annoy god the fear of god does not mean that you are scared of god but it, 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 it you are having the consciousness that this thing that I'm about to do, is it going to annoy God or is it going to glorify the name of God? That is what the fear of God mean, means. And we are quick to quote that um, in Job chapter 2, verse 29, that when men say there is a casting down, we shall say there is a lifting up. But there are some conditions precedent for us to what to achieve that. There are some conditions precedent. You cannot we, we don't just jump to verse 29 and say when men say there is a casting down, we say there's a lifting up. There is a condition precedent for that to happen. And what is it? Is if thou return to God Almighty, praise the name of Lord. And that's in verse 23, Job chapter 22, verse 23. And one of the ways you can you can have a fantastic relationship is by depending fully on the word of God. The first one is fear of God. The second one is depending fully. I didn't say depend on the word of God. I said depending fully. Because some of us, we depend partially. We just pick some parts of the word of God and depend. The other one, we depend on something else. God is not a man that he should lie. He honors his word more than his name. As Christians, we are expected to totally rely on his word to flourish. God is our source. 
and human beings are the channels but the problem is that we have reversed the trend we are putting human beings as our source and putting god as as an alternative praise the name of the lord so we need to make god our source we need to solely depend on him and that is what elijah did elijah obeyed god's word he obeyed god's word he was not wavering at all he obeyed god's word fully and that was when, when god instructed him that he should go to carry canyon the other side of jordan that a raven bed would feed him and he would drink from the brooks you know the things the, you know most times we we christians we are too scientific we are too experimental we are too maybe because of education we have read so much we have done a lot of research you can begin to wonder when god said that okay elijah go to a particular place i will send a raving bed to feed you you can begin to wonder that god why are you sending a raving bed why can't you send an eagle why can't you send you understand why can't you do this it doesn't make sense it doesn't it's not logical a raving bed is known to be very selfish so how can a selfish person be feeding me a raving bed is greedy how can a greedy person be feeding me how could you send me to a, a to a raving bed but that is the word of god you are not supposed to process it you are supposed to that's why i said depend fully <coughs> on the word of god so how could god send a raven to feed elijah who is a, a selfish creature to feed elijah but that is god's word and when the brooks got dried god now directed him to the widow of Zarephath. when the brooks got dried god directed him to the widow of Zarephath. so you you can begin to ask again what's the correlation between the raven and the and and a widow the widow of Zarephath. what is the correlation at least okay if god you have told me to go to the raven will feed me now maybe if you want to change the animal you can say okay a goat should feed me or a cow should feed me but god changed it completely and said he should meet a widow so you may naturally think that god will send him to a goat or animal but god directed him to a widow first king chapter 17 verse 7 and the bible said god chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and he said it was word will not return to him void so policies change laws change constitution change for those of us in the uk we all see our laws are just changing like the weather laws change constitution change but what god's word stands sure heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall not pass away human will fail you they would even disappoint you in short some of them will not pick your call some people will block you you can't see them but god would always remain faithful praise the name of the lord and the second thing you need to do as right, we quickly round up is we must be diligent one of the ways we can thrive and flourish in these hard times number one is to have a fantastic relationship with god then number two is that we must be diligent the bible made us to understand that in proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 it said seest thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before things he shall not stand before mean men praise the name of the lord proverbs chapter 13 verse 4 say the soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich shall be made rich so we need to be diligent you can't just fold your hands and expect manna to fall from heaven you must do be diligent in whatever you're doing doing something and doing it well not just doing something doing it well that a mom usually say this and i think mommy law usually say it when she say he said whatever you do stand out even if you are frying akara fry it with class even if you are selling anything sell it even if you make air make it very well even if you are a tailor don't be sewing old uh, school clothes or and all the likes that is said you must what you must do it with class you don't need to join the bad one bandwagon a lazy person cannot flourish at all there is no alternative to it a lazy person cannot flourish hallelujah you must show excellence in your craft you must show excellence in your craft in your trade in your profession so don't say i'm a tailor i'm a fashion designer i'm a barber i'm this no if if if, if i was a doctor ah honestly i would be very hard working no irrespective of your trade 
your profession, your career, you must show diligence. There is a place of diligence. You can't be speaking in tongues and your and your shop is dirty, and you expect customers to come. You can't be you can't be you can expect to get clients. You can't be sleeping day and night and be expecting to be and you expect to flourish. The Bible made us to understand that a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hands to sleep, so that so shall thy poverty come as one that travelleth. So we need to be diligent. And diligence entails what? Persistency. Some people are starting, they don't have finishing. Some people can be showing the, um, um, agility from the beginning. At some point, they will just chicken out. You need to be persistent and disciplined. You need to be persistent and disciplined. Beloved, we are expected to be a shining light in the midst of darkness. The Bible made us to understand that let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And, who are, and we are the light. We are the light of the world. The Bible also made us to understand in Psalm 92 verse 12, it said, the righteous shall flourish like a plant, palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of, Ban uh, of Lebanon. Praise the name of the Lord. We know what the palm tree is, irrespective. The plant palm tree does the weather or the atmosphere does not determine the growth of the palm tree. And that is what the Lord has told us that we would what flourish like a palm tree. We would flourish like a palm tree. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is my prayer that every every time we we, we call on him would answer in the name of jesus and the lord will grant us the grace to be able to flourish like the palm tree in the name of jesus praise the name of the lord so very quickly as i said as i said earlier on uh, that our times are real our times are real but we can navigate our way through we can stand out we can be distinct we can come out tops praise the name of the lord and another thing to just quickly add is that in the in, in among the relationship with god we must be planted we must be planted in the presence of god praise the name of the lord we must be planted because if we are not planted we can get carried away the lord the bible made us to understand that he shall flourish that be planted in the house and in in the house of the lord and he shall flourish in the court of god so we need to we should not just be a sunday sunday christian or one uh, one leg in and one leg out we need to be what we need to be planted in the world in, in in the house of god and not despising what or uh, the assembly of believers we should not be too busy we should not be too busy for god praise the name of the lord hallelujah it is my prayer that god is going to grant us grace to be able to stand out and flourish in difficult and hard times we will not be overwhelmed by difficult and hard times in the name of jesus when in your seated position why not bow down your head and begin to ask for the grace to be able to adhere to all what we've discovered that father in this period in this season father i want i would experience i will flourish i will flourish in this moment i would have the fear of god i would have the fear of god i would depend on you fully i would not depend on you partially that in all of my doings, I will be diligent. I will not be lazy. Let's begin to ask God for the grace. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. Father, we pray that every of these things we have discussed this evening, Father, we pray that we shall not just be hearers, but be doers of this word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for answered prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Why not jam your beautiful hands unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. All right. In the next 20 seconds, I want you to raise your voice as you begin to pray for Pastor Tolu, that the Lord will strengthen him, that the Lord will help him, that the Lord will replenish his wisdom in the name of Jesus, that every instruction, every information, and that, that and every virtue 
that has flown out of him or come out of him to us that the lord replenish them tonight in the mighty name of the lord jesus that the lord give him more wisdom the lord give him more utterance in the mighty name of the lord jesus father we pray for your son we ask for more utterance more impact in the name of jesus we ask that you replenish his strength in the name of the lord jesus lord you have used him as a vessel unto honor the lord it will not end with dishonor in the name of the Lord Jesus. That grace, more grace, will be released upon him in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, you will take him from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. I believe you've been blessed tonight. I believe you've been blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Once again, wherever you are, why not jam your hands together once again in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right, I'd like to welcome those that are fellowshipping with us for the first time. Okay, I can see a hand. Joseph Nana, sorry, Kiere. Oh, is it Yere? Praise God. It's the, I dropped the message. We dropped the message earlier that you should let us know where you're joining us from so that we can um, welcome you properly. But I'm glad to let you know that online tonight, we have... Uh, the parents of our pastor that just finished speaking, Daddy and Mommy Ajilore. Daddy, we love you. We celebrate you. Mommy, we love you. We celebrate you. And also tonight, we have um, Abiodun, Abiola, Mrs., I believe. Praise God. Let's jam our hands together for them. All right. We have um, Abose de Ajilore. I believe that should be Mommy. Mommy, you're welcome in Jesus' name. All right. Pastor Tolu, thank you so much. We also have uh, Sister Christiana. Good to have you join us. God bless you. We celebrate you. We love you. Sister oh, yeah. Sandra, good to see you. God bless you. Ah, uh, Judith. Uh -uh. Judith, good to have you join us tonight. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We have Dr. John Olubenga all the way from South Wales. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We have our pastor all the way from Middlesbrough, Pastor Joseph Ezekiel. God bless you. <laughs> then, of course, I've welcomed Joseph Lanag Yere. And then we have Joy Adeoju Ah, Rechi Rechi, all the way from mid, um, uh, Manchester. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We also have um, Sister Lola. Ah, good to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We have Sister Mujisola Kikelomo. We have Mr. John Okonla. God bless you. We have Pastor Olushola Okpaleye from Nigeria. Hallelujah. Uh, we have all the way from um, Ileife, I believe, Belumi Ajilore. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. And then we have our pastor's wife, <laughs> Sister Temi, all the way. All the way from Beaumont, and then of course also from Beaumont, Brad, uh, Brad James, Isa. God bless you. Thank you for joining up with us. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody was raising up his hand, or is it a hand? Um, Joseph, Nana, please. You have the floor in case you want to say something. You are raising up your hand. You can unmute yourself and speak. Are you talking to us? Are you saying anything? You raised up your hand earlier, or you have a question for Pastor? Okay, all right. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Good to have all of you join up with us. This meeting holds every fortnight, every two weeks. So we look forward to having you join us again. The Lord bless you. Thank you for coming in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Pastor Joseph Ezekiel. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, it's offering time. Why not package your seed, whatever you have brought to bless God with at this point in time? Let's package our offering, our seed, our kingdom investment. And if you have done that, I would just like you to say a word or two, send it on an errand into your future. Uh, I don't know what you are believing God for, but you can just use that, you know, uh, in line with the preaching we have heard this evening, one of the ways to strive in this economy 
or in this hard time is by doing the word of God, that is listening to the word of God fully. And one of the things God told us is for us to do what? To give to him, like be a cheerful giver. And as you continue to do that, you begin to receive the reward. So why not just send that offering, that seed on an errand into your future now and see what God will do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you for a moment like this. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the word that has come forth. And thank you for your people that have obeyed your word and have brought out of the abundance that you have given unto them. They have brought this little. We pray that this shall ascend unto you, Lord Jesus, like the sweet smelling savour in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will enrich us and make things easy for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may cast your seed with joy. Amen. Shalom. Praise the Lord. Please let's listen to the final announcement. Please join us tomorrow. Saturday is our Bible study time. Um, we meet by 5.30 p.m. Nigerian time. We are encouraged to read and study the book of Acts chapter 15. And it's an online... Sunday service, 8 a.m. by the grace of God. ICG Global Fellowship comes off first Friday, April, by the grace of God. As you join us, the Lord will bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want him. I can't stop his glory. We stand for Christ on earth. Check us out and the words that stop. Speak on us, you will see his beauty. See his love, you will see his glory. Shining all over us, we are the I can stop his glory. We stand for Christ on earth. I can stop his glory. We stand for Christ on earth. Check us out and the world steps up. Click on us. See his beauty. See his love, you will see his glory shining all over us. We are the icons of his glory. We stand for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ because as he is, so are we in this world. My path and the path of the destroyer shall never cross. Psalm 17, verse 4. And because I am a son in this house, I am mighty. Please, before you sign out, just say one hallelujah. Mommy and daddy, let's start with mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy, please unmute yourself and say one hallelujah before you sign out. Please, the others, I'm begging you, don't sign out yet until we hear your beautiful voices. Mommy and daddy, please unmute yourself. One hallelujah. Mommy and daddy, are they still online? Yes, they are. Hallelujah. Praise yes, the Lord. Mommy. Nice to hear your voice. Yes. Mommy, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. nice to hear your voice. Mommy, <laughs> Mommy. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. South Wales, let's start with South Wales. Sister Tosi and Brother John and my children, one hallelujah before you sign out. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our pastor, Pastor Ajilori and Temi, one hallelujah before you go. 
Hallelujah. Same thing. Don't say my center voice me. Ezekiel. I... <laughs> oh, yeah, same thing. One, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Good. Good to hear your voice. Who else is there? Yes, please. Man. Please just unmute yourself and shout one hallelujah before you leave. Please. Please, please. <laughs> Sister Christiana, please. One hallelujah. 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 Rock, me. One hallelujah before you leave. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Mr. James, one hallelujah before you leave. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, who else have I not called? If I've not called your name, please. Hallelujah. It must be an oversight. Yeah, Sister Winnie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sister Eunice, please. Who else has not said hallelujah? Sister Winnie. Please. Sister Winnie. Hallelujah. Sister Winnie, please. One hallelujah from you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Nice to hear your voice. Who else? Yeah. Before you leave us, just say one hallelujah. On ground. They didn't say hallelujah. <laughs> Good to see you. We love you. We celebrate you. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. 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 You are muted. You are muted. Pastor B, good evening. Be your leave. Be your leave. Thank you, Mr. James. They have left. So, who you invited everybody? I love all the people. We will see all your invites. Amen. Do we preach again in April? I was fine.